Patch 9.1.5 has surprised me again. And no, that's actually not clickbait. I thought that changing the AoE cap in Shadowlands was just not a feasible thing for a patch to do. And I thought that because, I mean, the AoE cap, that's core, like, as a combat mechanic. It's probably core to how they've tuned some dungeons and things. Uh, but no, the AoE cap is, in fact, changing. And now that patch 9.1.5 is headed to the public test realm, Blizzard have revealed a few new features as well. I think there's some quite welcome things, so I'm going to run you through the new info. And then, of course, some of the old opinions. We now have details on Legion Time Walking. Okay, Black Rook Hold, Eye of Ashara, Dark Heart Thicket, which I always loved, Vault of the Wardens, which I also really liked, Notharian's Lair, which I also liked a lot, and Court of Stars, which is also really good for me. They're all there as dungeons, and they can be done as normal for time walking. But there's a new time walking mode, Time Worn Keystones. It's Time Walking Mythic Plus, and... It straight up is Mythic Plus. These dungeons have got their own set of affixes, they have the same old loot they did in Legion, but they actually drop at Shadowlands Mythic Plus item levels, and runs of these contribute to the Great Vault. So if you're doing a Dark Heart Thicket plus 15, that's just like doing um, a Shadowlands dungeon plus 15. The only difference is that the Legion Time Walking loot cannot be in the Great Vault, even though dungeon progress with them does contribute to the Great Vault, and you can even use Valor Points to upgrade your Legion Mythic Plus loot. All right, a few little opinions on this. Uh, there is the criticism I've got to put out because I think this is something we need to think about. This event lasts for two weeks when it first comes out, then I believe it will last for one week, but it's time walking. So how often will it, you know, how often A, is it a time walking week, and then B, a Legion time walking week? We're going to get a handful of these per year. Now, what's the point here if we don't sort out the schedule of time walking events so that people could actually enjoy this feature on a more regular basis? Because I think this would be extremely welcome. Uh, now, I believe Dratnos and Tattles had an idea of just adding two Mythic Plus compatible dungeons into each season to sort of shake it up. I think that's a pretty cool idea. There's also just, you know, what does a, a Time Walking 2 look like, right? Something where this is all a lot more accessible and it's a more proper game system in WoW, not just a little bonus event. Then another thing I think about is the Time Walking Raids currently drop 226 loot. I'd be interested, you know, what would a heroic Time Walking Raid look like that would be tuned to drop heroic raid loot? What would that look like? Because if I could take my mates back to Throne of Thunder and show them one of my favorite raids and a formative experience, that would be cool. Overall, this is a great step in the right direction for World of Warcraft that paves the way for, in my head, some form of time walking version 2 that's a more permanent game feature, not a small event. One can hope. Now, there are a few other thoughts, like what will this do for balance? You know, will any crazy new trinkets sneak in? And if that does happen, and this is only up for, you know, two weeks initially, then one week afterward, then I guess you could say that the, you know, the real Mythic Plusers are going to be getting real grindy with this, compressed within a single week to target items. Is that a big problem? Probably not the largest problem in the world. Certainly would be less of a problem if there weren't as many restrictions to a system such as this. So, a few challenges to solve, but a move in the right direction. All right, Grip Finder. So you'll now be able to search within a numeric range. This is quite good, actually. It will let you target keystone levels and rating brackets with your search. Also, creators can set minimum Mythic Plus or PvP ratings for their group. You can also autofill your listing based on your Mythic Plus keystone. And if you wish to, you can select a playstyle for your run. Um, I assume that just, you know, eases some frictions in Mythic Plus and helps to set expectations for people joining parties. Overall, this is great. I would say, let us filter by text, including excluding by text, so that people could add WTS or boost as a search filter and remove those results. It wouldn't solve the problem, but if it's less visible, then I think that would make people happy. 
And speaking of making people happy, we just published our latest behind the scenes podcast over on Patreon, Losing Our Marbles episode two. So hit that up for a little bit of game info because I have a busy six weeks ahead of me. Uh, what we are working on with the channels. Then of course for podcasts, there's also the Lore Walking podcast and a bunch more content. And of course, loot. I've got this really cool like magical tome pin. Uh, so here's this month's loot. Look, Patreon's basically a perfect situation. It helps us do basically dumb shit that loses us money, like all of these cool Turalian money shots, John being able to go and make custom Army of the Light battle tanks. Um, so we can do cool, fun things like that, that I think a lot of you guys enjoy, and in return, you get loot and content, so it's pretty sweet. All right, patrons, thank you. Let's talk about the AoE cap. No more AoE cap, sort of. Right, Blizzard said that their goal was to reinforce fantasies and gameplay niches with the AoE cap, but they admitted that it hurt combat feel and it felt kind of silly in legacy content. Because, hey, if you do a big frost scythe and there's 20 guys in front of you, and you only hit like five or six of them, it doesn't really feel good, right? Especially if the, you know, which six are chosen. Eh, who knows? So Blizzard have finally acted on feedback given to them during the Shadowlands alpha test and beta test. <laughs> An ongoing theme for this patch. Am I frustrated that it took uh, this long to solve something that should have been proposed in alpha and then pretty quickly shot down? Yes, I am frustrated still. Am I glad that this is happening? That the change is happening? Yeah, obviously that's a good thing. I mean, seriously, Blizzard, between, like, the AoE cap and then the GCD change of the Battle for Azeroth expansion, like, please, just stop messing with core gameplay because of spreadsheety balance concerns. I know you lads love your spreadsheets, um, and the team does handle, well, I mean, a lot of the team that handles this is, like, from the theory crafting space, but you guys have got to keep the core combat design and the game feel as priority number one because uh, it's important. All right, what's actually happening? Well, most AoE capped abilities will hit more targets than their old cap. Only difference is they'll hit the additional targets for reduced damage. So you're still going to hit five targets for big, big, big damage, right? Proper damage for the ability, but more damage will go to other enemies within your attack. You know, Frost Scythe is a you know, pretty easy way to conceptualize it. So this basically preserves the idea of having big, many target AoE abilities like Consecration and Blizzard have their niche, but also making previously capped abilities a little bit more powerful and still particularly strong within their gameplay niche. And of course, it does make these abilities literally hit targets as you would expect. Now, for this to feel good, like if, you know, target six and you used to have a cap of five, if target six takes like seven damage, you know, it wouldn't feel good. So tuning will be important for this, and we'll just have to monitor that over the PTR process. Leveling then. All right, well, their planned changes have once more lined up with that wish list video that I did, so neat. Threads of Fate has a new set of dailies, a uh, Torghast for Soul Ash and XP, uh, and then Battlegrounds for XP and gear. I think that's brilliant. But is it just one daily a day? I mean, that's not really as good as it could have been. And it would be kind of nice to get like a Torghast leveling set for just doing Torghast runs when you're leveling. Some people might like that. Um, I also think, you know, daily is not super ideal. Like surely some people would just like to level a tune by smashing out a few BGs. Yeah, you can do that. But maybe if the quest supported that a bit more, it would be better. Okay, anyway, Blizzard have also made the bonus objectives in the zones for leveling in Threads of Fate quite a bit shorter and offer more XP. Brilliant! And they've also made the zone objectives give you, uh, you know, better gear and also anima. Now, obviously, the devil is in the balance here, so we need to see how this all pans out. But in principle, good positive changes, so that's stuff to be happy about. Legendary Scrapping! Yep, it's been confirmed that you'll get a full refund of your Soul Ash and your Soul Cinders. Good. Another thing I mentioned in that wishlist video has, uh, has turned out, you know, it's something they were thinking of anyway. Also, I mean, this is an admission that Legendary Recrafting was a problem and that a Legendary Scrapper was needed. So you know what? I'm not gonna be a big dickhead, but I'm gonna be a bit of a dickhead. Hey! Suck it, people who got really pissy and bent over backwards to claim that legendary recrafting wasn't a problem just because, oh, it's fine for me. The people have won. 
you were going against them. Oh, also, 100% drop rate for legendary power, so that'll be dead handy for some odds. Overall, good stuff. Some people will still be a little bit worried that they'll feel like they'll, you know, have to buy a WoW token to actually get the crafting mats, but I don't know. How do we solve that? There probably should be a way to solve that, shouldn't there? Next, some handy things for the Mog Hunters. Of course, Island Expeditions can be queued solo or with a group, and also they've announced that Warfronts can launch with only five players. That's pretty good. I mean, I do wonder what a Warfront even feels like at level 60. Maybe a bit of a waiting game for like the NPCs and all those things to play out. But still, look, it's a lot of transmog for a lapsed player to farm, so there'll be some people who are probably just going to smash out loads of islands, loads of Warfronts, get some gear, Will it be the most fun ever? No, but it'll be a reward that they want, so, so you know, why not have at it? It's not like that stuff is tied to player power anymore, so with it being a bit more opt-in, it won't have as many of the negative connotations as it did in, uh, you know, in, in BFA, so that's good. PvP, more good things. They've split up the PvP ranks, adding things like Combatant 1 and Combatant 2. And this is basically so that they can give you more gradated item level upgrades, because now item level upgrades are unlocked at increments of 200 rating. That basically just allows for more granular progression in three eye level 200 rating increments. Sounds good to me. Probably won't engage with it that much, um, because, you know, I suck at PvP, but actually, this is really good if you suck at PvP like me, because if you suck like I do, then climbing 200 rating is, you know, a little bit more of a challenge than it is for an experienced PvPer, so uh, I think this will be a bit nicer for the reward loop, so thumbs up, uh, thumbs up there. Okay, Covenant stuff. This will be a recap for those who watched our live show on Friday, but uh, that's good to know. All right. If you hit a certain renowned threshold, you'll be able to freely swap between Covenants, including the ability to wear any Covenant transmog set, no matter what Covenant you're currently in. If you hit this threshold on your main, then your alts will be able to freely swap as well. Also, a bit of a renowned catch-up thing. If you complete the 9-0 and 9-1 campaigns on your main, then, of course, you can skip those campaigns on your alt. That's awesome, and the renown that was associated with those campaigns will be something that you'll just get via the renown catch-up. And that basically will have the effect, I think, of you noticing that the catch-up feels a bit more aggressive as it won't take any pending campaign steps into account. Okay, then completing the Shadowlands campaign will instantly unlock uh, your third Soulbind. That's including on your alts too, so that's brilliant. Also for them, well, this is for the Fae, uh, new soul and critter shapes are being added. They're also adding more Maw missions for, um, you know, the high rank adventure table stuff. And the Anima Conductor buffs are going to last past daily reset. And they're also adding, uh, well, basically higher drop rate of the rare Night Fay Conservatory seeds, and those seeds will last stack up to 200. And they're also adding in a repeatable Maw Soul quest, which will basically just let you get all of those souls for your Sanctum upgrades a whole bunch faster. A few other things to round us off. So weather is being added to Stormwind and Orgrimmar. Kind of keen to see what that looks like. Also legacy loot mode for BFA dungeons and raids, which will basically mean that if you can just go into a BFA dungeon with two people, you'll get a full raid group's worth of loot, not just personal loot. So brilliant for the Mog Hunters. Then there's new heirloom ranks for Shadowlands leveling. So that's pretty sweet. And speaking of heirlooms, they're adding in those heirloom maps for all continents. You know, those are the ones you click on them and they give you all the flight points. So that's awesome for your alts. Also, reporters of other players will receive a message when their report results in action being taken. And also, offenders will um, get a message for current and future penalties if they don't correct their behavior. Basically, people don't really have much faith that reports get dealt with in World of Warcraft. I think a lot of people have noticed that in games like Final Fantasy XIV, there is a stronger Game Master presence. I think quite clearly here, Blizzard are trying to counter that perception, probably by making the operations of the GMs and customer service a bit more visible to players. Of course, we just need to see how much actually does still get done. Now also, the Anima Conductor, um, well, an Anima Conductor is being added to Corthia. You'll get it after a few quests, and that will just let you deposit um, Anima there, which will be handy for cleaning up your bags. And also, there is new fast travel in the Maw, including to Desmatron, so straight to the raid, and Perdition Halt. So that'll be dead handy. 
Also, you'll be able to link transmog sets in chat. They're also, of course, doing a big balance pass on times, I think, I believe talents, but also uh, on quite a lot of Covenant abilities. As an example, Flade Shot is going to get a bit more competitive for the Hunters. Of course, that stuff's all subject to change, and I'm not going into details because it's early days. All right, overall opinions. Look, I've got to be real with you. For me, a lot of the damage here is, is done, and I think for a lot of people, that is the case. Patch 9.1.5 is how 9.1 should have launched, and systemically, a lot of this is actually how 9.0 should have launched. A lot of this stuff is alpha and beta feedback that was not actioned upon. And ultimately, if this patch is going to come out in October or November, this stuff will all literally be a year late. And that's a year we can't really afford, given that Shadowlands was coming off the back of BFA, and BFA had loads of design problems. So, I'll say this. I'm mostly keen in this stuff because it may indicate that 10.0 will not launch with such mistakes. I mean, Legion had issues that, you know, it powered through because it just had so much content. Uh, BFA was, of course, a disaster. And Shadowlands also has been full of silly designs like the domination sockets and, and things like that. Surely the idea that a lot of these new things they try are, are just silly and not that good and you know, players don't really like them, surely that has sunk in because like thematically, these mistakes are pretty much all the same, you know? I think it's just a case where all these player-oriented changes should have been made during the beta and that's just how that is. And the next expansion really will need to show not only that some surface level token things have been done, but that this has all truly been taken to heart and that the direction WoW has been going in actually does take a pretty hard turn. Another thing, this uh, for a PTR launch was a real nice set of developer insights. I did note as well, it was posted by Linksy, who appears to be one of the newer community managers at the team. So that certainly is a good thing, and I have to wonder, you know, Ian Hazakostas is tweeting a bit more, we've got Mike Ybarra, co-leader of Blizzard, tweeting a good bit more. Two, does this kind of set the tone going forward for communications? Will there be more? When more Blizzard staff return to the office, will Lore be able to do more videos and things like that with the devs? I mean, hopefully. You also have to wonder, like, why are they suddenly bothering to listen to us when past expansions have shown us that, you know, acceptance of player feedback has been at best through gritted teeth? Are they getting a bit more pressure from the top? I mean, those quotes from Scott Johnson uh, supplied to the BBC do indicate that WoW's numbers took more of a dip than the devs would have expected, and our scraping of public data would certainly agree with that assertion. Another thing, I guess, yeah, as I said, I'm surprised at the AoE cap being a mid x pack change. I thought that would have been reverted in the next expansion, so that's pretty sweet. Also, for PvP, just a little thing, the Renown, uh, like the Renown gate and the Honor upgrades, I think that really sucked when 915 came out. I think by the time 9, or 91 even, by the time 915 comes out, obviously, you know, with Renown bars, that won't really matter, but certainly for patch 9.2. They need to not kill Honor Gear with the Renown Bar again, should they choose to continue the Renown Bar, that is. Then also for Mythic Plus Legion, I mean, to me, that does feel like a first version of something larger. I've talked a little bit, or quite a bit in our stream, me and Matt have discussed it, um, you know, about what we would like to see from a future of Time Walking, so I won't belabor the point. Instead, I'll just say, what would you like to see from a Time Walking version 2? You know, now that we know that something like Legion dungeons can actually work with Mythic Plus, such, you know, they're scaled up to the, the current game. You know, what could we do? I'd love, I'd love to hear what you've got to say in that. So that's basically it for me. Of course, if you want some real sweet loot like this and also some nice podcasts for your ears and a bunch of other stuff, you can help with the Patreon um, because, uh, yeah, Patreon's a pretty cool place. A bunch of cool stuff there. All right, that's it for me. Let me know what you think of 915. I'll catch you in the next one.